Thank you for enlisting in basic training. I'm Lisa Ratzleff and I'll be drilling you today. First, we're going to go on a tour of the main military records that have great genealogical value. Then we'll go on maneuvers together in a case study. And we'll be doing all of this double time. Because I want you in military records. Military records contain a lot of great information. They will help us to complete our ancestor stories. They will allow us to find information that maybe we haven't found in any other source. And can you think of a better way to honor our ancestors than to know their sacrifices and to pass those stories along? There are an abundance of military records available to us. We're going to go through each one of these and get a good preview. These records contain a wealth of information of great genealogical value. These are just a few of the items that you may find in military records. Maybe you're not sure if your ancestors fought in a war. Here's a great way to find out what wars your ancestors may have fought in. If you'll check the column on the left, those are birth years. Then on the right, those are wars that they possibly could have fought in. Now this table is available in the handout, so you don't need to worry about writing it all down. So where can we find these records online? Well, Family Search, of course, is the first place to start. Ancestry has some great databases. Fold3 specializes in military records. And Google can help you find other records. What about the repositories? The first place to go is the National Archives, or NARA, archives.gov. Once you get there, here is the option for military records. We'll see two columns. The column on the left is for more current records. These are housed in the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis. The column on the right is for older records. These are housed in the National Archives of Washington, D.C. And if you are looking for the older records, the best place to start is the link for genealogical research. Please be aware that the National Personnel Records Center suffered a catastrophic fire in 1973. As you can see, a lot of records were destroyed. However, service records can be reconstructed so if you asked for records and they tell you they were lost in the fire, you can ask for reconstructed records. When we think about military records, we usually think about men. But you will find women in, military, in these records. Now, before the year 1900, it was actually illegal for women to join any of the military units in the United States. But you will still find women in these records. Women like Margaret Corbin, who saw her husband killed in front of her. She took over firing the big guns and was grievously wounded. She never recovered from her wounds. And the men that she served with fought for her to receive a military pension. She was the first woman to receive a military pension in the United States. Women like Deborah Sampson, who dressed up as men and fought bravely. Deborah Sampson also has a military pension. And Kathy Williams, who is the first Buffalo soldier who joined as a man, she applied for a pension and unfortunately was denied. Of course, after 1900, women were able to join the military in each of these branches. Are you ready to take a dive into the records? You know, I can't resist telling you a little bit about this. At one point, they were trying to see if bicycles could replace horses in the service. And these Buffalo soldiers did a great job. They felt that it was very successful, but apparently not everyone did. OK, we have World War II draft cards, draft registration cards, and World War I draft cards. But did you know that the draft actually began in the Civil War? 
absolutely. Here's a draft registration available on Ancestry, and we can see that Grover Cleveland registered for the draft in the Civil War. This also contains great information. Compiled military service records are for anything before World War I. They contain great information. Here's the information you can usually find. The physical description may or may not be included. It just depends on the war. Here's what a compiled military service record looks like. First of all, you have an envelope with numbers on the front. As you look at those numbers, these are card numbers. Inside the envelope are a lot of cards. Each card has one of those numbers on the back, and you can see the information here that is on each of the cards. Starting with World War II, we'll find official military personnel files. These files are made public 62 years after the discharge date of the veteran. For those who were discharged after 1959, you will need to be the veteran or next of kin in order to access these records. They do contain a, an abundance and a wealth of information. Just be aware that specific battles or engagements will not be included in those records. For that information, look for a unit history. Here's an example of an OMPF, also called a 201 file. This is an induction record. And the separation record, or DD-214. Pension application files are a gold mine of genealogical information. In order for a, wi a widow to apply for a pension, she had to prove that she had married the veteran and that their children were their children. Here's just a little information out of 52 pages in this particular pension application file that we can look at. First of all, we see the unit that this person served in. We find his birthplace, his age when he enlisted, a physical description, he is about 5'5", five five. his occupation before the war, where he died, and what he died of, and the date, and the reason of death, right here in this record. We can also find vital information about the family members. Here we see that this veteran married Mary Ann Crane. So now we have her maiden name. We have the marriage place and the marriage date. We also have the living children with their birth dates. This is fantastic because the church records were burned in a fire. In order to prove family members, Sometimes they simply ripped the page out of their Bible and sent that in with their application. Or maybe they sent their stitched sampler in. These have been preserved with the pension application records. Wouldn't you love to find something like this? After the Revolutionary War, our country was very cash poor, but land rich. And so they offered land bounties for those who had fought in the Revolutionary War. They also offered them for the War of 1812. Here's an example of a Revolutionary War land bounty. Notice it's for 160 acres. These records can help us to understand why our veteran moved or maybe even tell us where they came from. Here is a great example of a land bounty record. Um, notice on the front page, we have the warrant numbers, the number of acres, and then the year which would be 1850 and 1855. This is for the War of 1812. In order to become a son or daughter of the American Revolution, a person must apply. In the application, they need to show how they are descended from an ancestor, and they need to show that ancestor's service record, or in other words, how they served during the American Revolution. The Daughters of the American Revolution has a new website, dar.org, where you can search for these applications and gain some great information. 
Are you ready to go on maneuvers? Okay, here's our standing operating procedure. First of all, start with what you know. What information have you already gathered? Then search online. Find as much information as you can about the ancestor. Any records you can find about that person, as well as any military information you can find for him or her. Then, if you find that you just would like more information, go ahead and go to the repositories to order more records. So, here's our SOP. And if you can find a better word with a P, let me know and I'll use it. Okay, we need a tactical kit. And in this tactical kit, first of all, we need this information. The veteran's name, a birth year, the residence, and a possible war that they may have served in. As we find this information, the next thing we're going to look for is the military information what branch they served in, what unit they were in, if they were an officer or an enlisted person, what their rank was, and what their muster dates are. Now muster simply means muster in is when they joined or enlisted, and muster out is when they left the service. So here's our case study. We have Henry Reed here in the 1860 census. We find him with his family, and we find that he's 16 years old. So in our tactical kit, we can immediately put his name, birth year, residence, and a possible war. Next, we're going to hop over to Ancestry and look at one of my favorite databases. This database, the Civil War Soldiers Records and Profiles database is very similar to a compiled service record. In other words, the key information has been extracted and it's all together in one place. For Henry, we see some great information. We have his enlistment date, his rank, muster in date, the unit he served with. I mean, just about everything. Um, his that he was uh, wounded in at the end of September uh, near Fort Harrison, Virginia, and his muster out date, which is the 1st of December, 1864. So now we can add these items to our tactical kit. Remember how we talked about Google? Google is a great place to find more information about the unit. In this case, I'll go ahead and search on the unit, Henry served in, and we have a unit history by Samuel Bates. As we scroll in, we see that the end of September when Henry was wounded was the Battle of Fort Harrison. It's also known as the, the Battle of Chapin's Farm. The next thing we do is head over to Fold 3 to see if we can find a pension application record. Well, we don't find a pension application, but we do find an index. And on this index card, we find the date when the application was created, who, crea who created the application, in this case his father, and that the certificate number is 152261. So, so we can go ahead and add that information to our tactical kit. With that information, we can now order a pension application. Let's head over to archives.gov. And once we, NATF form 85 is the form we use to order a pension application. And our tactical kit has all the information we need in order to fill this form in. When this pension application came in, I was super excited. I just, I couldn't wait to read every single word in this application. We have information here that shows that, yes, we have the right Henry Reed, we have his unit, and we see that he is reported deceased on December 1st, 1864, in the hospital at Fort Harrison, that he died of wounds received at Chapin's Farm. Now, it wasn't until I read this that I realized 
He had been wounded on the 29th of September and he died on December 1st. He had been gut shot. He suffered for several weeks before he finally passed away. We find other information in this application. We find out that Aquila Reed, who is the father, is 58 years of age, and he is unable to care for himself and to earn the money that he needs in order to live. We also find something that I was completely not expecting. We see that the mother of Henry Reed died on the 7th day of March, 1863. We had not been able to find this death date anywhere. Was, this was thrilling to have this information. And we have a signature for Aquila Reed, which is so cool. I love the signatures. Okay, remember, as you go out and find your records, start with what you know, search online, and then if you need to, order records from the repositories. I know that this is the monument for the Battle at Iwo Jima, but to me, it represents all of the veterans who did so much for us, who sacrificed, who served our country, and gave us the freedoms that we enjoy now. I, you know, how do you thank someone for doing that? As I've pondered about this and thought about it, one thing that occurred to me is that we can get to know them. We can find the records for our military ancestors and we can find out the sacrifices they made for us. As we read these through these sacrifices and we come to know what they've done for us, we develop a true love and true gratitude for their service and their sacrifices, and in some cases, the ultimate sacrifice. I know you can do this. Go out and find your ancestors in military records.